These are five things you might not know about Football Manager that might just help you win the Champions League. And for tip number one, some players that play centrally actually have side preferences. So when you're setting up your starting lineup, pay attention to those side preferences to decide on which side of the center you want to put them. Let me illustrate. Here we have Jan Bednarik, who essentially just plays central defender. But if I hover over his central defender rating, we can see that he actually prefers to be on the right of a two-man pairing or the right or middle of a three-man grouping. So when I'm setting up my starting lineup and we're playing two central defenders, I put Jan Bednarik on the right of those two central defenders because that is the position that he prefers to be in. And on the other hand, I have Taylor Harwood Bellis playing on the left. And if we look at Taylor Harwood Bellis, he does not have a side preference. So I can stick Bednarik on the right and be comfortable with Harwood Bellis on the left. Bednarik is in his more natural, comfortable position. And since Harwood Bellis does not have a side preference, I can easily put him on the left. And overall, playing a player in their more natural position will help them to do a little bit better in game helping you to potentially do better with your team. Tip number two is go to your transfers and check whether you can sell any of those transfer clauses. This is a great way to raise money in your transfer budget if you need it at any time. So currently we're on the 16th of December, so the January transfer window is approaching. And right now, I have about 13 million pounds in the transfer budget, but more importantly, I have 100% transfer revenue retention. So despite having 13 million pounds in the transfer budget, I could potentially increase this by selling some transfer clauses. And you can see which transfer clauses are available. If you go to transfers, transfers and clauses, you can see anything with the little pound symbol or whatever currency you're using. And just go to any of them with the green. This means that you can sell them. So here we have Diamond Edwards. We can sell this one for 7.72K. I'm going to go for it. That's not a whole lot, but for Pierre-Emile Hoiberg, we can sell this one for 3.1 million. I'm definitely going to sell that. For Romeo Lavia, we can get 2.8 million there, 747,000 there. And as I keep going here, Tino Livermento, we can get overall almost 2.5 million from those different clauses. Mohamed Salisu, we can get 3 million here. And we can get, wow, an extra 3 million here. That's 6 million from Silisu alone. For Luke Shaw, we can get almost 7.5 million pounds. Wow, I didn't realize actually how many transfer clauses were available to sell here. This is 810,000. So as you can see, there's just a ton of clauses that you can sell. And if you have a lot of future fees from your sales, or if you're in a club that sold a lot of players recently, you're likely to have a lot of options here for you. And as we can see here, we've gone from 13 million in the transfer budget to 37 and a half million in the transfer budget. Now I have tons of money to spend in January to improve my squad simply because of all those transfer classes. So if you're at a new club or you've been playing for your save for a while, definitely check those transfer clauses. If you need money in the transfer budget, that is a great way to start. For tip number three, once you've sold all those transfer clauses and you're looking for players to sign, go into your recruitment focus and make sure you set your scouting priorities. I actually haven't set my scout priorities for a while. So you can see here, I actually have a, a ton that I probably don't need. She needs to sort out her priorities. I could clear a lot of these out. I mean, we, if I know Michael Obafemi, he's coming at a C recommendation, and I know he's not going to be good enough, let me just cancel that assignment. Let me cancel this one too. Let me make it easier on my scouts to get in the reports that I want them to get in. Additionally, let's say I have someone that maybe I want to know about right on January 1st, and I'm really interested in them. So let's take Eriberto Gerardo here. He looks like a pretty good player. He's only 18 years old. I want to get a scout report on him. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to have any scout scout him for one week. 
But if I just do that, I'm probably not going to get that scout report back in one week before the transfer window. Because if I look at the scout rep priorities, he's way down at the bottom right now. We're actually on hold. I just don't have enough scouts to deal with 21 different scouting priorities. But I can set my scouting rep priorities so that I can get that scout report a lot quicker. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to move him to the top, Heriberto Gerardo. Now it's not on hold. He's the next guy up. He's, that's going to come back in one week, and I'll have that scouting report back immediately. So if you have a player that you want scouted right away, make sure you set your scout priorities, and also maybe do what I haven't done here yet, and clear your scout priorities to make it easier on your scouts as well. For tip number four, create notes and reminders within the game so that you never forget to do anything. As I'm playing, I forget to do things all the time. And what saves me is creating notes that get sent to my inbox that prompt me to think, oh, that's right, I need to do whatever it is I needed to do. For example, let's say that you wanted to sign a lone player on deadline day. But right now, for me, it's December 16th. I'm not even in the transfer window. But let's say I was looking at Gonzalo Borges. And if I make an offer for him and I make a loan offer, man, right now, they want me to pay 100% of his salary and a pr pretty big playing monthly and unused monthly fee. And a lot of times, this will go down on transfer deadline day. This might be a free loan on deadline day. But I have a lot of time until I get there what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a note to myself to look at Borges on deadline day to see if this is now a free loan. And the way to do that is go to history and create note. And all you have to do is create a title for the note. I'll title it Borges. You can add something to, to write in your inbox. So I'm just going to say check to see if free loan available. And at this point, you can set your reminder date. So I'm going to set my reminder date for transfer deadline day. So I'm going to go to January 31st, click set and click confirm. And now I'm going to receive an inbox message on January 31st, 2024, right on deadline day, right at the beginning of deadline day. And that will remind me to check whether or not I can sign Borges on a free loan. And on an unrelated note, you can always tell if you have a note on a player because they'll have this little yellow icon above them that tells you that they've had a note and if you ever see that you can always go and check the notes that you have on them by going to the note section and seeing what you wrote and for tip number five the final thing you might not know about football manager is that you can actually change contract start dates they don't always need to start immediately and that might be a huge financial boost for your club so i'm going to give the example of che adams here his contract expires at the end of the season, and I want to renew his contract. But there are things that I can do to work around what we've got right now. So if I go into the contract negotiation, he wants to be an important player, and he wants that contract to start immediately. But let's say I wasn't in a financial position to give him a raise right now. However, I do feel like my club is going to get promoted. So I could actually change this contract start date to next season when I know I'm going to have a little bit more money and I can do a better job of affording any wage rise that he might want. So the way to change that contract start date is instead of immediate, I can go to the end of the season and we'll see if he accepts that. And sure enough, he is happy to move on. This is for end of the season. We can finalize promises and now we can negotiate the contract. And now he does want a salary raise price. However, I think my club is going to be promoted by the end of the season. We're going to have a lot more money. So I'm more comfortable offering him that wage rise. So now I can finalize the deal. We can exit talks. And if he accepts that, we're going to be paying him this 30,000 pounds per week for the rest of the season while we're in the Skybet Championship. And his new 50,000 per week contract won't start until we're getting Premier League money and we can afford that. And this is a really great tool to use if you're in the lower leagues. Maybe you have a young player who you have on cheap, but you want to make sure that you extend him to a long deal. If you can't afford his wage right now, change that contract start date to next season when you might get promoted and have a lot more money. 
and you can better afford that wage. So those are five things that you might not have known about Football Manager. Hopefully one of those things was helpful for you and hopefully you can implement some of those things into your save so that you can go on and win the Champions League or English Premier Division or wherever you're playing. So with that, again, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you all are having a wonderful week and I will see you all next time. Bye.